The regular meeting of Rural Fire Protection District Number Two is called to order, dated November 28, 2022. Roll call, please. Hey, we have Mr. a uh, Mr. Forrest. We have a public yeah. hearing. We have a public hearing. I don't see it on here. Right here at the oh, it's the that. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Hold up, Dennis. Trace, don't leave. Okay, it's better. Jesus. All right, public hearing. Notice is here by given that a public hearing will be held by the Tangier Parish Rural Property Protection District Number Two Board of Commissioners on Monday, November 28, 2022, immediately following the regular meeting of TPC at Tangier Parish Garden A. Burgess Governmental Building, 206 East Marbury Street, Amit, Louisiana. Contact number 985-748-3211 on the following. One, proposed operating budget for the year ending December 31st, 2023. Anyone here to comment on that? What day, when will we uh, finalize that? Tonight. Uh, tonight. We're going gonna to vote it tonight. Uh, we need a motion? Well, we just, we, the public hearing's over. Public hearing. Oh, okay. No one here, obviously, to speak on it. Okay, we're going to our regular meeting. Regular meeting. Dated November 28, 2022. Roll call, please. Mr. Forrest? Here. Mr. Ingrafia? Present. Mr. Joseph? Present. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mr. Ridgdell? Here. Mr. Bayou? Here. Mr. Wells? Here. Mr. VL? Here. Ms. Hodge? Here. Ms. Coates? Here. Thank you. We do have a quorum present. Anyone wishing to address any agenda item? Hear none? Next item is the accepting of resignation of our no, sec adoption of I'm minutes. sorry, boy, I can't see tonight. <laughs> adoption of minutes of record being dated October 24, 2022. I am going to die, Dr. Tomorrow. Second. Motion by Mr. Bruno, second by Mrs. Hyde. Roll call, please. Mr. Forrest? Yes. Mr. Ingrafia? Yes. Mr. Joseph? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mr. Bayou? Yes. Mr. Ridgell? Yes. Mr. Bayou? Yes. Mr. Wells? Yes. Mr. VL? Yes. Ms. Hyde? Yes, Ms. Coates. Yes. Motion passes and it's awarded. Now, accept the resignation so of our former secretary, Ms. Nell DeFree. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Yes, sir. Second here. Got, got Ms. Wells. I, I noticed that uh, in the letter of resignation. Uh huh. What I said was, I noticed in the letter of resignation that we're addressing tonight, um, she mentioned that there were some unethical practices in the office. So I was wondering if anybody had an opportunity to look into that. But did she list the unethical practices, Mr. Wells? She said there were some. I think that's what well, I just said. I know, but. Uh, but I'm asking if anybody. I did not. Did anyone here get any? Well, I think y'all met with her she gave y'all the, the that was the personnel committee that met with her and then y'all went and sat down with uh, the the things that she had said that she had concerns about we met with her me david uh kim bridget you and went over the stuff she had and then y'all went and met with Dennis James about the accusations and I think Dennis James cleared up those things too didn't But there he? was nothing unethical. Right. Yes. Yeah. So I, I don't I think it was just, you know. But we didn't meet with her after her resignation. Right. Yes. Yeah. And that, and that was the question I was asking. Since she mentioned that I thought it might be something that we uh, might want to look into. Uh, may either validate it or, or, or not or whatever. I'm not saying that they were. I just thought it was something that we need to have a clarification on well, for an employee to mention that. If it's legitimate stuff, they should have been listed. Yeah, I don't plan on the looking at The stuff that anything. was brought up, we looked into, that was not around unethical stuff, 
We walked through all of that. There was nothing there. That was my question. I understand, Mr. Wells. That was my question. All right. Anybody looked into it? That, okay. Okay. Answer, that was my the answer question. is I'm not looking into it. Uh, anything That's else? No. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, the stuff that she brought to us the first time, there was no basis to any of it. Yeah. So I would think that in the two or three days after that effect, there couldn't have been no basis to it either. Yeah, but I'm just mentioning a lot of records. Oh, I know. Yeah, I, yeah I know. because I didn't know anything about what you guys are talking about. Oh, but right. I did have an opportunity to read that letter, okay. and that's why I mentioned it. Okay, the chair will entertain a motion to accept it. Mr. Mr. Bruno? No, we already had it. Oh, who made the motion? I'm second. VSAC. VSAC. Okay, roll call, please. Mr. Ingrafia? Yes. Mr. Joseph? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mr. Rizdal? Yes. Mr. Mayhew? Yes. Mr. Wells? Yes. Mr. Vial? Yes. Ms. Hodd? Yes. Ms. Coates? Yes. Mr. Forrest. Yes. Motion passes and it's awarded. Uh, the next item is the election of officers. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I'm wondering why we have the election of officers on this agenda. And traditionally, we don't elect officers to our meeting uh, in January. So I would like to make the motion that uh, we remove this item from the agenda. All right, Mr. Wilson, made a motion to move the item of election of officers from the agenda. Can we get a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Razor. Roll call, please. Mr. Joseph? No. Mr. Bruno? No. Mr. Ridgedal? Yes. Mr. Mayhew? Yes. Mr. Wells? Yes. Mr. Vial? No. Ms. Hyde? Yes. Ms. Coates? Yes. Mr. Forrest? No. Mr. Ingrafia? No. What we got? Todd. R5. <laughs> I make a motion for Mr. Joseph for President of the Fire Board. Second. Okay, it's been a motion by Mr. Bruno, Mr. to be out to recommend Louis Joseph be President of the Fire Board. Are there any nominations from the floor? Are there any nominations from the floor? I'll make a motion to close nomination. One more time. Are there any nominations from the floor? Now you can make a motion. I make a motion to close nomination. Motion by Mr. Forrest. Second, second, second by Mr. Mr. Villar. Roll call. Mr. Bruno. Yes. Mr. Ridgedal. Yes. Mr. Mayu. Yes. Mr. Wells. Yes. Mr. Villar. Yes. Ms. Hyde. Yes. Ms. Coates. Yes. Mr. Forrest. Yes. Mr. Ingrafia. Yes. Mr. Joseph. Yes. We don't have a uh, secretary. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, the next position is the office of vice president. Then the nomination from the floor. Anybody want to go to the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey, we don't, we don't get it. I'll be the president and the vice. Any nominations as vice president? I nominate Ms. Coates. I'll second. Okay, Mr. Rich has nominated, Ms. nominated Mrs. Coates to be vice president. Mr. Bruno seconded. Are there any nominations from the floor for vice president once? Any nominations from the floor for vice president twice? Any nominations from the floor for vice president three times? Move the nomination. Here and none. Second. Mr. Bruno, I reckon be closed. Mr. Rich is seconded. Got it? Mm -hmm. Roll call. Mr. Ridgetal? Yes. Mr. Mayu? Yes. Mr. Wells? Yes. Mr. Vial? Yes. Ms. Hyde? Yes. Ms. Coates? Yes. Mr. Forrest? Yes. Mr. Ingrafia? Yes. Mr. Joseph? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Motion passed, and so are congratulations, Mrs. Coates. You don't have a second No. Only two positions. Uh, next item, eight war five hours. Yes, sir. Uh, it's a ratification of a part-time position. It's one part-time position at $12 per hour. The move. Motion second. by Mr. Vial. Okay. Second by Mr. Ingraff, your roll call, please. Mr. Wells? Yes. Mr. Vial? <clears throat> yes. Ms. Hyde? Yes. Ms. Coates? Yes. Mr. Forrest? Yes. Mr. Ingraffia? Yes. Mr. Joseph? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Ridgetall? Yes. It was part time, right, Dennis? Yeah, it's one part time position. Yes. Okay. Plus the five matters. Uh, it's a ratification. Position of a full-time position yeah it's one full-time position at nine dollars per hour for Husser so move second that's mr. 
Okay. And Graffian. And Second by Forrest. Second by Mr. Forrest. Roll call, please. Mr. Wells. Yes. Mr. Vial. Yes. Ms. Hyde. Yes. Ms. Coates. Yes. Mr. Forrest. Yes. Mr. Ingrafia. Yes. Mr. Joseph. Yes. Mr. Bruno. Yes. Mr. Ristol. Yes. Mr. Mayhew. Yes. Motion passes and is so ordered. Natalba, any five matters, full-time position? Yes, sir. It's ratification of one full-time position at 10.25 per hour. So move. What about Mr. Bruno? Second. Second by Mr. Forrest. Roll call, please. Mr. Vial. Yes. Ms. Hyde. Yes. Ms. Coates. Yes. Mr. Forrest. Yes. Mr. Ingrafia. Yes. Mr. Joseph. Yes. Mr. Bruno. Yes. Mr. Ridgetal. Yes. Mr. Mayu. Yes. Mr. Wells. Yes. The motion passes and so ordered. Wilmer Prime Matters, another full time position. Yes, sir. It, for Wilmer, it's a ratification of one full time position at $10 per hour. I'll make the motion. No, second. Motion by Mr. Forrest, second by Mr. Ingrafia. Roll call, please. Ms. Hyde. Yes. Ms. Coates? Yes. Mr. Forrest? Yes. Mr. Ingrafia? Yes. Mr. Joseph? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mr. Ridgetal? Yes. Mr. Mayu? Yes. Mr. Wells? Yes. Mr. Vial? Yes. Motion passes and it's awarded. Hammond Fire Matters, we have two items, five and six. Then as we do one at a time. Ratification of pay increases? Yes, sir. Uh, it's it's a total of 15 positions that they're getting uh, a one dollar an hour raise uh, effective January 1 of 2023 so this will not take effect until January 1 2023 and it's for 15 positions a dollar an hour increase uh, no, no sir I mean it, I have all of the, the printables for, for that uh, it's well, you know, Hammond is well able to, to do that, to swing that. Okay. Second. Motion by Mr. Bruno. Second, Mr. Razor. Roll call, please. Ms. Coates? Yes. Mr. Forrest? Yes. Mr. Ingrafia? Yes. Mr. Joseph? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Mr. Ridgetal? Yeah. Mr. Mayu? Yes. Mr. Wells? Yes. Mr. Vial? Yes. Ms. Hyde? Yes. Motion passes and it's so ordered. Item six, ratification of full-time position for Hammond. So what, what they're doing with this is actually three positions, uh, three full-time positions. They're taking two of the positions, uh, that's two part-time people going to full-time. And, and they will get the raises come January 1 of a dollar an hour. The other one is one, just a regular hire, one full-time position uh, at $11 per hour. So move. Second here. Okay. Motion by Mr. Mayu. Second by Mr. Yeah. Roll call, please. Mr. Forrest. Yes. Mr. Ingrafia. Yes. Mr. Joseph. Yes. Mr. Bruno. Yes. Mr. Ridgetal. Yes. Mr. Mayu. Yes. Mr. Wells. Yes. Mr. Vial. Yes. Ms. Hyde. Yes. Ms. Coates. Yes. Okay. That motion passes and it's awarded. Monthly reports and registers. Any questions? You should have been emailed them. I just emailed them out just, just the other day. Y'all should have received those. Any questions? Any discussion? What was the capital allocation? I'm, I'm sorry. <coughs> Turn your mic on, Kim. Sorry. The capital outlay on 2022 budget. I, I did not see that. It's $350,000, and then it goes away in 23. It might have been a, a for that, it might sound like a truck, a $350,000 truck. It might have been a capital outlay. Did you say what? They didn't say what department. I don't have it in front of me, Ms. Coates. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's just in the general. That's why I was. Okay. I, I, I will get you the answer tomorrow. I, okay. I, I will I'm find curious. Out. Okay. Administrator's report. All right. So the administrator's report. One thing I'd like to do is is uh, I want to say thanks to. I don't know if Johnny's here. Chief Polito. Uh, he did invite me to the Fire Chiefs Association meeting. Uh, that was November 15th. That that's, that's the first time I've been invited. Actually, second time I've been invited since I've been the administrator. Uh, so in 10 years, I, I was very happy to go to the meeting. Uh, they, they asked me to come to the meeting to, to speak of a couple things. Uh, one, of the, one of the topics that they had was the purchasing order system. So I, I looked, I mean, went there, uh, met with the chiefs. Uh, the only question that was asked was whether or not a department can get a monthly purchase order. Uh, 
Yes, they can. It's monthly purchase orders that's been going on for you know for you know since I've been the administrator, uh, and that was the only question that that was asked for. And that would be like at one location that they. Yes, sir. If they needed to go to the hardware store, they don't have to call me every time open, they need. It's an open PS. It's yes, yes. For it's for the month, it, and it's for the auto parts store, the the uh, hardware store, Gabriel's or something like that. They they can do a monthly PO. Uh, so, so that's what one of the chiefs asked if, if that's available, and I said yes, it is. It's been available for, you know, several years now. Dennis, when they, when it's open like that, they still bring you all of the bills that you match to the statement that comes in. Yes, sir. What I, you know, what I ask them to do is to hold the invoices to, to the purchase, you know, like to the hardware store. That way, I don't have a ton of these sitting around my office. So if that department goes to the to the hardware store, he holds all of those invoices. Till the end of the month, and then he turns them in, and, that, and that's how we, you know, normally do those monthly PRs. And That's a lot easier than writing all those per. Uh, it, 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 it absolutely is, and it's convenient for for the chiefs. Uh, is there a dollar amount? It's so. so look, I put a, a to two hundred dollars. You know, you're not going to spend more than two hundred dollars if you're going to do a significant purchase, like you're going to buy something. Then, then I would suggest not using the monthly p purchase order and request a purchase order to get that item, you know. Uh, but yes, it, it normally is like, like a $200 limit on it. So that's the limit that we're putting on it, I'm sorry. It's, 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 look, it, it, it's just a number that I have to enter on the purchase order in, in the system. It can go, you know, now, please don't take it three, four, five hundred dollars $500, you know. Then you're kind of going around the system. It, it's just for small purchases. Well, I think we need to have an internal control of and have a limit, yeah. you know, yes, that yeah, way it, everyone's yeah. aware. And, and, so. and, and I look at the receipts that come back and like I said, can you say that tonight? Won't you just, can we just set a limit? Sure. I, I normally I put $200 on it. That's what you recommended. That's, that's what I put on. Has that been a problem? It has not been a problem. It well, has I see, a, I see a problem back there. Look, Jeff, good, be clear. On that one for purchase on that's is for the that's month. For, uh, that's not to go, that's for small purchasing, like nuts and bolts and stuff like that. What I'm asking is $200 for one purchase and $200 for the month because I go to Crabbe and Downs and I buy six Superboards and that's 100 bucks. Well, you, you look at so, the price of, you know, the children are going off. Yeah. 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 Well, I just get a PO, it makes sense. So, 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 so I will say this, when the purchase order does come in for, for a monthly, so, and it might exceed the two hundred dollar limit. That's not a look. That's not a you know by by a little bit by a hundred or you know one hundred and fifty dollars. I'll go in and amend that purchase order to match the yeah. monthly total. Right. So we are talking about per purchase order. Yeah, yeah. and it's it's not. It's it's for the month. It's for that month. If you're gonna go to Gabriel's or Crapazana's, it's two hundred dollars for the month. If you're gonna make a significant purchase. Request another purchase order for it. It, it, it. It's not a hard system. It's been working great. Uh, you know, it's been working great for ten years. Well, you know, if a purchase order is over two hundred and fifty dollars, it needs to be a separate purchase order. That's that's what I recommend. So I would say let's move it to two fifty or three hundred dollars and give them a little bit of leeway. But if you're going to buy something and it's going to be significant more than two hundred and fifty or then request a new purchase order. It needs to be a purchase order. Correct. So, but you want that in the form of a motion? I, I think y'all want to put a, a well, limit on it. I think we ought to maybe do five hundred for the month, but one specific, no more than two hundred. So, so I, does that make sense? Yeah. I would not go like uh, five hundred for the month. My recommendation is maybe three hundred, three three fifty. I would not recommend five hundred because what happens when they do the five hundred? You know, I'm not saying. Look, to me, that's a significant purchase. If you're going to make a $500 purchase, they can go one time. But one time, one each, each individual can't be. What she's saying is, if it's greater than $200, you got. You have to have a separate. That, okay. okay, so you can uh, have multiple small ones yes. adding up to 500. You know, just no, because no, of the I, way prices are, and he said, a couple and, and, two and, by fours can be a hundred bucks. Exactly, and, and look, with the price of materials, get everything going up. You know, same thing with the fuel that we're running into. Say, it, look, okay. everything's going up, and, and right. I'm fine with it. Would y'all, would y'all be, uh, well, Kim, that's a good idea. I mean, we just got to figure what the amount in the monthly. Do you want to do five, or you want to try three fifty, or a lower amount, and anything Go for over two hundred?
Turn your mic on. Turn your mic on, Kim. Okay. Anything over 200, you get a single purchase order. Look, I'll say this. The, 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 yes. Okay. Uh, I'll say this. The, the, the majority of, of the monthly POs, a lot of times they're 100 bucks. Yeah. you know, $150 for the month. Okay, you know? okay we got it. Cl Carlo, come on, let's clean up this motion. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll move the figure and make it a $300 <laughs> monthly amount. Any purchases during the month that are greater than 200 would have a separate purchase order. That's fine. I'll okay. okay. And, uh, and I'll second. All right, any Good. discussion? Uh, Roll call, please. Mr. Ingraffia? Yes. Mr. Joseph? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mr. Ridgdell? Yes. Mr. Mayu? Yes. Mr. Wells? Yes. Mr. Vial? Yes. Ms. Hodd? Yes. Ms. Coates? Yes. Mr. Forrest? Yes. Okay, we got through that. So, so uh, on with my administrator's report. So the other thing that was discussed at, at that meeting, and this is something that Mr. David was the chair for, the, for that committee, was the 911 emergency button that we, this was two years ago, uh, that we've been trying to come up and formulate a, a, a plan, an operating plan through 911. Uh, it has taken some, taken off again, you know, uh, chief folks from Hammond, and some of the some of the other chiefs are working to get that 911 button that we pushed so hard to to get activated to, to come up with a uh, policy that everybody can can uh, can live with. You're talking, you know, 13 departments in this parish. Uh, so th so they're, they're they're looking at the policies on implementing on this 911 emergency button for the firemen. Uh, I think it's 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 way past due that that we get this done. Uh, so. Hopefully, with the chiefs, that they'll come up with some kind of policy, and we'll be able to implement this through 911. Okay. Anything else on the administrative report? That 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 should be it, sir. Okay. Any questions? No. I move to accept the administrative report. Right by Mr. Bruno to accept the administrative report. Second here. Second by Mr. B. I roll call, please. Mr. Joseph. Yes. Mr. Bruno. Yes. Mr. Ridgetel. Yes. Mr. Bay. Yes. Mr. Wells? Yes. Mr. VL? Yes. Ms. Hodd? Yes. Ms. Coates? Yes. Mr. Forrest? Yes. Mr. Ingraffio? Yes. Okay. Motion passes and so ordered. Other matters, item seven, adoption of resolution amending the operation, operating budget <laughs> for the year ending December 31st, 2022. Uh, Mr. Dennis James is not going to be uh, be here. What we got? We are <laughs> Raised it with, with the hit is with live and you crystal. Any copies of anything? Thank you, ma'am. We have copies in the packet. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Crystal Liddell. I'm an associate of Dennis James who stood up here um, at the prior monthly meeting. So the first resolution um, that you guys will be voting on is the amended 2022 budget. Nothing has changed from last month. Everything's exactly the same as what you've seen. The next resolution, number eight on the agenda, is the proposed 2023 budget. There have been two changes since last month. Um, we had estimated a 5% increase of property value for ad valorem tax collection. We got the Graham recap, so the real number is in, and it is actually a 6.87% increase. So we adjusted the budget for the Graham recap amount. And the only other change is that the administrative assistant uh, salary was moved the, back to a part-time. Yeah, the full-time salary was taken out which keeps the administrative transfer the same as in 2022 um, for a 3.96 overall administrative burden. So moved. Second. Second. Awesome. Mr. Bruno, second by Mr. Forrest. Any, any discussion? You have a question, Kim? Well, I was just asking the machine. Okay. Did they answer your question? 
Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> well, well you don't you know do. who I am. I'm Lyle Lambert. I'm the tax director with uh, James Lambert. And yeah, Rich. the tax man okay. coming. Kim, it was explained to me that uh, that three hundred fifty thousand dollars for was a, a prepayment on a fire truck that could possibly be delivered in two thousand and twenty-two. Therefore, it got moved to the capital outlay. Whose truck was that, Dennis? I remember somebody mm -hmm. paying for that. Was it Kentwood? Did y'all pay for a truck ahead of time? I think it was Kentwood's truck. I think it was. Yeah. So yeah, I figured it was a truck. Because they got a discount if they paid right. the truck early, I think, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Me was a truck. <laughs> okay. Good job, Law. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay. Are you gonna take them together? Yeah. Roll call, please. We're doing this together. Okay. Mr. Bruno. Yes. Mr. Ridgel. Yes. Mr. Mayi. Yes. Mr. Wells. Yes. Mr. Vial. Yes. Ms. Hyde. Yes. Ms. Coates. Yes. Mr. Forrest. Yes. Mr. Ingrafia. Yes. Mr. Joseph. Yes. So that's for seven and eight. Okay. We did, okay. Them, both, we did them both together. Uh huh. Yes. Number nine. Update on list of fixed assets. So we, we have three departments left. So that, that will be done by the end of the month. But, but are we okay though with the oh, no, oh yes sir we, no no we're doing good at the, the some of the cert the stuff that we have some of the equipment that we need to surplus uh, I've worked with Chief Coxon on that to, to come up with a list so yeah we'll be presenting that in January and the other departments also Dennis the yes. ones that have surplus yes Dennis the, the uh, Mantech stuff is uh, uh, Ida hurricane stuff I'm sorry. The stuff in Manchac is Ida stuff, hurricane. So, but. so at, at, at the last meeting, and, and it was brought up that, you know, for whatever, uh, they were questioning on whether work was done or anything was done at that, you know, did the administrator take action for any of that building? Uh, one of the things I did want to bring up, and, and look, I, I didn't remember at the last meeting, we rented a satellite, a, 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 a dormitory for Ponchatoula Fire Department to get them out of that mold and all of that. And it cost right at $6,000, $5,950 that, that we paid to have this dormitory placed there. Uh, several months later, uh, the chief did come up to me and says, hey man, why don't you get them to come pick this up? Because we're not even using it. We haven't spent one night in that, that shelter. So it was so worried. It was so worried about this mold. We did our office, my office, did get them a shelter to get them out of that condition, and they did not take advantage of it. I can't. I can't make them drink the water. Uh, so I did. I did want to bring that up. Uh, that the admit that me as the administrator, I did act on it. Uh, the other thing that that was brought up is that uh, I did not. Well, the the. Manshack Station and the Ponchatoula Station, where there was no correspondence on, on uh, finding out what needs to be done to, for, for, for repairs. Uh, I did remind y'all that, that, that I did meet with y'all at, at Paul's Cafe. In fact, at the, after the last fire board meeting, that next morning, I emailed out all the parties involved, uh, Ms. Coates, Ms. Ms. Hyde, uh, Chief Coxon, uh, <coughs> Chief, Chief Joyner, about requesting a meeting so we can all get together and come up with a game plan on what we want to do. I cannot do nothing unless I know what we need to do. So I, I, I did send out an email the day after the last fire board meeting and I have not gotten a response. So if, if, if we want to meet, I, I'm available anytime. Uh, I, you know, that's, that's, what I, that's what I need to do. And that's fine, but what do, what do we typically, like, so shouldn't we be sending a, a estimator or something? Like, what did we do on the other stations? So, the chiefs took it and ran with it. So, so, so the chiefs normally tell me what they want done, and, and, and we'll work together. Um, and they got to tell, they, with, excuse me, Dennis, but on the run, Justin <coughs> sat down with Dennis and I, told us what he wanted to do. And, and we got somebody to go out. They, they basically told Bridget what they wanted. Bridget drew the plans for it. They went out and got estimates of the cost, and that's what uh, the building's up. Now they're getting estimates to finish the inside. But 
the administrator or really y'all can't do anything. The chiefs have got to say, hey, this is what I want to do with this building. I want to gut it, put all new walls in it, new insulation. Then you get somebody to go out and give you a price on what you need to do with it. But until the chiefs say what they want to do, I mean, I'm, we, I'm sure we could send Dennis out there and tell him, look, see what you need to do. But so, I don't think that's how we operate. We always let the chiefs make that decision. I did talk to Chief Coxon, and uh, he had mentioned uh, some company that he had talked to uh, as one to, that he was, was interested in having them come over and give him a quote. And I said, that's fine. Uh, and then I told him that I have a, a, another contractor that did work on the other stations that is willing to come out there. And whenever we're ready, I can go out there and meet with him and, and kind of go over the plans. One of the things that uh, it was early that Chief Coxon had said that he didn't want to do the, the total restoration of the station, only wanted to do certain parts of it. And, and uh, you know, I don't know if that's, that's a good idea or not, but that's, that's up to the board's decision on that. Uh, so th th there's some things that need to be looked at from the chief. I need to get information from that chief on which way we need to go. What are you looking at? What do we need to do? And since y'all were the, 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 the parties involved, I, I, I sent out the request to meet with y'all also. If y'all get a chance, go by and look at the independent station. The hurricane blew the roof off. It rained inside. We got messed it all the insulation. It's done. The contractor got in there. And I mean, they did a beautiful job. It's finished. It's it's finished. It's finished. And he's the one that we're waiting for the electrician to give us the quote on the electrical for the Laranja station. As soon as we get the electrical, we're ready to go with finishing the inside. <coughs> sure. All right. Then it's come down after the storm. We looked at the station. You got a contractor come look at it. I didn't want to totally restore the whole thing because I thought we was in the process of building a new station. So why spend seventy, eighty thousand dollars when we could get by with twenty, twenty-five? Now I got a quote in five o'clock this evening. The price on redoing the station. Okay. It's not totally restored. It's not cabinets and all that. But I mean, it'll fix all the walls, all the doors. No. Uh, tomorrow I'll get with you and, and, and we'll go over that. <coughs> Perfect. Uh, so, so I just wanted to bring the, the board's attention to that, that. That look, you know, I. I, I have been working. We do have the insurance money, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and, and I'm sorry, I have to give you that, that figure for the insurance. Yes, okay. Okay, anything else for this? Uh, item 10, Punctula Strawberry Festival Tunnel to Towers. What's that all about? Uh, Bridget had access to be put on, and, and it's for... Oh, we got some here. guys getting up. <laughs> okay. Tunnels to Towers. It's a great organization. I donate to them. I mean, we appreciate that. Yeah. All right. I'm sure they're going to tell you. Thank you, sir. The guy that founded this lost his brother. Veteran in, uh, Square. Towers. He was a fireman, and he started. We're happy to announce that for 2023, 20, uh, we're bringing the Tunnel to Towers, the mobile exhibit, to the festival. Oh, man, we had contracted crazy. for 2020. Is your mic on? Yes. Okay. We had contracted for 2020, and of course with COVID, 2021, we couldn't have a festival. Last year, the date was not available for the Strawberry Festival event. So, plus with Hurricane Ida. Plus, with, yeah, with Ida and everything. So the date was open. They moved our, 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 uh, our date to us. Mm -hmm. We're getting it ready, and uh, we're trying to get the information out. We're inviting all of the area fire departments, if they want to display an apparatus, so the Strawberry parking lot in Punchatula, that's going to be called Veteran Square for the weekend. Mm. So this mobile exhibit's going to set up there. So we'll escort them in on Wednesday from the state line. We'll have an escort and a procession, mm. and, and we'll get with y'all and we'll work that up because you know we'll have an agenda for everything. They'll set up Wednesday afternoon and then Thursday, okay. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Right. So Thursday we'll plan on having a ceremony. Uh, Time has not been decided yet, but we're going to have a ceremony. We're also uh, looking at inviting a governor and a lieutenant governor to attend. Uh, as you can see in Tunnel to Towers, they have helped six individuals by paying off their home mortgage in the honor of the fallen victims mm. in the state of Louisiana. And mm -hmm. Tunnel to Towers has never been to the state of Louisiana. This will be the first time for them. 
So along with Tunnel to Towers, we're also going to have the uh, Spirit of Louisiana fire truck, the one the truck that was donated from Louisiana to New York back in uh, Baton Rouge. It will be uh, parked next to Tunnel to Towers. Uh, the Tunnel to Towers comes with four New York firemen that took part of 9-11. So this is something really special. Uh, and then what we're going to do for the parade, we're going to put the Spirit of Louisiana fire truck in the parade with the four New York firemen. So that'll be something really nice to, uh, to show to people. We're also going to have uh, branches of the military, including the uh, Cajun Navy and also the uh, Pontchula High School ROTC. Good. Very uh, good. So it's going to be something we want to do it right. We want to do it special. Uh, they're very uh, anxious to come because they told, I met with them personally. They said every time there's a disaster, that Louisiana is the first one there to help. And they, want, they really want to come down, not only for the food, but also to show appreciation for what Louisiana does for the rest of the, the country. And look, That's if, outstanding. If, y'all, if you get a chance to read up on them, uh, they'll, they'll pay off, they do mortgage-free homes to veterans that have lost limbs and stuff like that. Right. And these homes they build are all modern where the... Smart the, homes. Yeah, they're smart so, homes right. where there's all computer operated, mm -hmm. automatic door openers. But Spiller, who's the chairman or the president, mm -hmm. lost his brother in 9-11 in one of the Twin Towers. Okay. And that, he took this on as his yes. mission. And uh, I mean, so, it's, a, it's a great So this call. is, this is a, a two and a half million dollar rig and opens up like these big hydraulic stages and there's, there's stories inside that you can see parts of the World Trade Center. Uh, there's a memorial on the back wall of all the fallen victims. Uh, there's stories of the firemen had to talk to the people. And then when you go around the back end, there's all a video of all the planes hitting the World Trade Centers that you can see. Oh, wow. So this is something really for the people that can't go to New York to be able to see it. And also, we're trying to work with the school system to get uh, the kids in to come through it. Good. We know it's their uh, week off of spring break. But well, we got some ideas. We're trying to work with uh, the superintendent to say if they come through, we give them a token. Can mm -hmm. you uh, give them some extra points or something to try mm -hmm. to entice them to come see this history? Look, I, I think y'all That's are doing, outstanding. That's a great, great thing that y'all are doing. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we ever should forget what happened. No. You know? So. I'll tell you what, uh, from, from uh, right to left, why don't you give us your names, case you contact uh, Jimmy Sligemeyer. I'm actually the treasurer of the Strawberry Festival Board is currently. Okay, Jimmy Sligemeyer. Yeah. Brayville LeBlanc, parliamentarian, former king, former chairman. LeBlanc, where are you from? Uh, okay. <laughs> Jody Bourne, I'm the sponsorship chairman and also past chairman from years past. I think that's a wonderful thing you guys Thank are really you guys. I actually I really saw did. it in another state and when I saw it I got the information and brought it back because I, I knew right away it was something now hopefully we have a beautiful weekend that yes yeah, so let's just hope fingers crossed yes sir but, um, it, it's, it's gonna be really something nice well, thank Maybe you all can so come back as it gets closer yeah. And uh, yeah. we'd love to have y'all back and see how sure. things are coming. If y'all so, uh, once we have an agenda. And so we ask, and if you know someone that may be interested in helping us make this possible, please pass it on because we are, we're taking donations or what have you. So if you know someone personally or a uh, business or something, we're reaching out to different areas to help <coughs> make this possible. Uh, Tangy Tourism has, has picked up the rooms because we've got to put all these people up during the fe festival. So they're picking that up for us. So we're we're trying to make this possible for everybody. Who do uh, they that? donate we, to? We got to phone them. Up. Who do they donate to? So if they have to donate, uh, we're up front in the bill. So they would donate to us the Poncho Jewel Strawberry okay. Festival. And in the memo of the check, you would put 9-11. So that way uh, our treasurer knows where to funnel the money. Because we have to upfront all the money. So uh, we've got all the contracts signed. So. It will happen. And I, I invite y'all to come that day, that Thursday, uh, to, to see it. It's really something special. Uh, so the Thursday will be April 13th. It's on the back, it's on of, the the flyer. back of the Turn sheet. The flyer over. We got a tentative kind of plan. Uh, and we plan on making a, a escort that we get to tell them where we want to start. And uh, we're looking at through the interstate off the parish so that way all the neighboring fire departments they want to take part can. 
Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to get with my Vietnam veterans group, and um, we're going to staff this and get some of our members out there to Appreciate participate it. and assist. And I may get all of you or one of you to come to our meeting. My and contact information is on there. Got cell phone's number. Give me a call. Yes, sir, I will. And I think that's wonderful what you guys are doing. I do have a uh, business card with my email if you want to reach out that way. I'll take, the, yes, sir. <coughs> thank you. All right. Thank you that very way, much. If you want to contact me via email or phone, my information is on there. All right. We'll get back with you. And I believe y'all have it posted on the TPG website yes. also. Yes. And you, also, uh, you've shared it on our parish government page already, haven't you? Look, I, was, uh, I, I wish the school system get a lot of our ROTC programs there as well, you know. They usually participate pretty good with that. Yeah, so we have a member of our committee that is actually, uh, he was a, a the unknown soldier. He was a, a, uh, a, a guard at the uh -huh. unknown soldier. And he's heading up working with all the branches of military, including ROTC. Great. Okay. Benton Thames. Good job. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you all. Thank Thank you all. Hey, thanks okay, all. yeah. Let's give a round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> good job. Okay, where are we, Dennis? That's it. Mr. Wells. That was it, huh? Yeah. Well, I got, I got one thing I'd like to bring up with okay. other fire matters. It just All right, take a second. go ahead. If y'all remember a few months ago, uh, 911 came here about donating the building to them and all that. Well, we've been trying for years as a board 911 has an awful lot of money in the bank. And as far as I know, after that meeting that we had here, they have done nothing to upgrade anything over there. I always hear from the fire departments, we got repeaters and towers that need assistance. You know, 911 is not any good if we can't communicate between the call going in and the call going out. And after the first of the year, I would like to have someone from 911 here. Uh, I was told that there's a tremendous amount of money in the bank that 911 is sitting on. If I want to know what the plans are, if they're going to upgrade this system, are they going to help with some of this stuff to make these communications better with these fire departments? Because if they're not, we're doing a great disservice to the people who are paying this fee on their phone bill yes, every month. Yes, uh, it, we're, we're not in the business to bank money. We're in the business to give service to the people who is paying for it. And I have seen, for years, I've seen no action over there. I mean, as far as I know, those, those panels that are in there now, uh, and somebody may correct me, they may be the same panels that was originally put in there when the system was put in. But I know we got repeaters around the parish that need addressing. We have areas that communications can't between two departments. If we got this money, we need to spend it. And we need to do it that's going to make it better for not only the fire and police, but all emergency situations. And if it's okay in January, I'm going to put it on the agenda that somebody from there or the whole board can come and tell us what their plans are going to be for this money because I, I don't see any action over there. And if it's because the building doesn't belong to them, no other parish uh, organization that's under this council is in a building that belongs to them. Every building belongs to the parish. Mm -hmm. So if you're mad because you don't own the building, you got to get over it and we got to get something done. But uh, I don't see no action and I think the board, it's time for the the fire board and the parish council will put a little pressure on them to get something done. So okay. come January, uh, I will put it on the agenda and we're going to have them here and see what their plans are for the new year to try to get something done. Okay, sounds good. Anything else from anyone? Well, let me just say to the fire chiefs, uh, we, we really, really appreciate everything you guys and your staff do, especially during the holiday season. When it's about to get cold, people using space heaters, accidents, fires. So you guys do a good job protecting the public and we appreciate it. Um, Trent, you wanna invite everybody to the grand opening? Yeah, uh, 10 o'clock, right? 
10 30. At 10.30 Saturday morning, we'll have the ribbon cutting on the new uh, library in Kentwood. So I'd encourage everybody to come out and take a look. It's uh, really, really nice. And I've uh, been looking forward to this for a long time. Good Thank job. you, Mr. Judge. Trent's providing the refreshments and the food. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they have some Kentwood water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's 10 a motion to adjourn. The move. Those else. Meeting adjourned.